हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू आई एग्जाम बी दिस वीडियो इज इन कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द डिस्कशन ऑन पास्ट या बेस्ड क्वेश्चन फॉर आर बी आई ग्रेड बी डी ई पी आर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू दिस इज द पार्ट टू ऑफ द डिस्कशन टूडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम मोर क्वेश्चन ऑन इकोनोमेट्रिक्स एंड स्टैटिस्टिक्स लेट सी क्वेश्चन नंबर फर्स्ट सो द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ हाइट ऑफ अमेरिकन वुमेन एज एटीन टू ट्वेंटी फोर इज अप्रॉक्सीमेटली नॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड with a mean of 65.5 inches and a standard deviation of 2.5 inches we have to calculate z score for a woman who is 6 feet tall now let's see how to solve this question here the value for mean is given to us x bar is 65.5 inches then we have the value for a standard deviation that is 2.5 inches then what we have we have the value for x that is 6 feet so first of all we convert it into inches that will become 72 inches by multiplying it with 12 now we see what is the formula for z score what is it it is x minus x bar upon a standard deviation so we can put all these values into this formula and find out the value for z score so here it will become 72 minus 65.5 upon 2.5 so it will be 6.5 upon 2.5 that is equals to 2.6 okay so this will be the answer let's see our options Here option one A is two point six zero, so this is the right answer for the question. This was a very simple direct formula based question. This type of question can be asked in one marks because it is basic and direct formula based question, so it won't be in two marks. It will be in one marks. Moving forward to question number two. If a model has a common intercept in k categories of qualitative variable, the number of dummies to be introduced is so there are k if there are k categories of the qualitative variable, we should introduce k minus one dummies into the model. Not it should not be k, it should be k minus one. So answer here is k minus one dummies. most of you might be wondering why we do not take k variables and instead we take k minus 1 variable so why because if you introduce two dummies there will be a case of perfect collinearity between the dummies and this type of problem is known as dummy variable trap dummy variable trap for example if we are taking dummies for gender let's say we are taking dummies for gender d1 takes the value 1 for female and 0 for male and likewise we are taking d2 that is taking value 1 for male and 0 for female if you find a matrix where you have the value for intercept d1 and d2 you will easily see that we can easily verify that d1 is equals to 1 minus d2 or d2 is equals to 1 minus d1 so this is a case of perfect collinear relationship if you do not follow this rule that you have to take k minus 1 dummies then there will be a problem that is known as dummy variable trap by number of dummy variables we include is k minus 1 so this is the correct answer for this question Now let's see question number number three. The market arrival and price data collected by a researcher over a period of time in a regulated market represents what sort of data? So whether it is primary, secondary, cross section data, time series data, or primary or secondary board data. So what is primary data? Primary data is actually the first hand data where the researcher goes into the market and collects the data himself. Okay. while secondary data is a data that is correct, collected second hand it means you are collecting data from other sources and they have collected it like if you are taking data from a government website that maintains the data on prices and arrival okay so 
if you are collecting data from that website it will known as secondary data because you are not taking it at first hand right what is cross section data can you collect data on most of the variables but for a particular period of time that is known as cross section data like if you are collecting data for height weight and say uh, marks and uh, some other variable for it's in a class for year 2022 so this will be cross sectional data okay what is time series data time series data is data that is collected over a period of time so if you are taking data from 1960 to some date like 2021 for prices and arrival if you are collecting data so it will fall under the category of time series data so the answer here is d time series data question number 4 which of the following is a consequence of heteroscedasticity this question is important for one marks and uh, you all should know the consequences of heteroscedasticity auto correlation and multi collinearity okay consequences plus remedies and things that leads to these problem so what are the sources what are the consequences what are the remedies you should know it because it can be asked in one marks question like this so what is the consequence of heteroscedasticity the coefficient obtained by applying ols should be will be linear but biased coefficient will be non linear but unbiased coefficient will be linear and consistent but biased coefficient will be linear and biased consistent but not best what is best we'll see the coefficient obtained by applying ols will be unbiased consistent best but non linear so what is the right answer for this question it is d because when we have a problem of heteroscedasticity and when we obtain the coefficient using ols the coefficient obtained is linear unbiased consistent but it is not best what is best it is not have it does not have the minimum variance these types of question can be asked in one marks and you have to prepare for all other problems too let's see last question for this part for durbin watson d test the value of d lies between 0 to 4 minus 1 to plus 1 0 to infinity 0 to 2 minus 2 to plus 2 so what is the answer for this question the answer is 0 to 4 the value for d in the durbin watson d test lies between 0 to 4 this is a very important topic and this question can come in one marks other questions that can be asked from this topic is first they can ask about the range of rho they can ask about the formula for d if there are some values given to you for rho and you have to find the value for d fourth you are given the value for rho or d now you have to see whether there is auto correlation in the data or not so these types of questions have been frequently asked in the past year and these are quite important and this particular topic is very important and many questions can be framed from this for one marks so let's see what is the range for rho the value of rho lies between minus 1 to plus 1 what is the formula to calculate d the formula to calculate d is 2 1 minus rho so if you are given the value for rho you can easily calculate the value for d using this formula okay and now you have to uh, see 
if you are given the value for rho or d you have to find the whether there is autocorrelation in the data or not so d lies between 0 to 4 so if d approaches to 4 there is negative autocorrelation and d if d approaches to 0 then there is positive autocorrelation if d is z equal to 2 then there is no auto correlation so this type of questions are frequently asked from durbin watson d test we will discuss more question from each section in the coming videos if you haven't subscribed the channel subscribe it and press the bell icon for future notifications. Thank you. All the best for your exams.